We now want to look at the energy, power, and intensity in terms of waves. A wave can transfer energy and momentum without the transfer of mass, as we said earlier. But how much energy? Well, it turns out that we can learn a lot about it by thinking about waves like water waves used by surfers or waves that we see for instance in the water in hurricanes. There is a direct connection between the amplitude A and the amount of energy that the wave has. The surfer wants to ride up here at the top of the wave. And that's because that's where there is the most energy that the wave has. Now, while we may think of this as troughs and such, the bottom line is, is that as this wave peak gets taller, this wave provides more energy to the surfer. And so there is a relation between the energy and the amplitude. And that relation is, is that it doesn't depend upon just the amplitude. It depends upon the square of the amplitude. There's energy and there's amplitude. Double the amplitude Double the wave's amplitude and increase wave's energy by a factor of four, not a factor of two. Triple the amplitude, you get nine times as much energy. Make it 10 times as tall, you get 100 times the energy. So larger waves have a more destructive power or have the creative power to provide kinetic energy to the surface board here by the taller the wave is. So a surfer wants tall waves. Now, as we see, not everything is at the amplitude at different points like right here or here you're at different heights and therefore you don't get the same amount of energy all the time furthermore the energy contained in the wave is spread out there's energy at this point this point and all other points so we usually since these waves move through or travel the amount of energy they're providing to the beach or the surfer changes depending on their location on the wave the energy is spread out, in other words, and it changes with time. So it makes sense to talk about energy per time or power rather than just energy. So I remind you, power is defined as energy divided by time. So since the energy depends upon the square of the amplitude, so does the power. The waves delivered energy can change with time. And is spread out over space. So we talk about power per area. Let me show you that. Let's think about a water wave like this coming in and there's a certain amplitude 
of this wave. And then there's a very small object here. As this wave comes in like this, a lot of this water is going to miss this box. And so that power is not going to be delivered to the person or the object. Let's say it's a house here about to be wiped out by a giant wave. Only the amount of the energy that hits here is actually going to be delivered to this object. So rather than talking about the total energy here, or the total energy per time, the power of this wave, we often want to know how much of it is actually striking this object. So we want to know the power per area, so we can multiply by the area of this object to find the power that's delivered. Now we have a name for this particular term. It's called intensity. So intensity is defined as power per area. So we can say it's P over A, or we could say it's energy divided by area times time. And intensity is generally given the symbol I. So when we talk about how bright a light is, we're talking about its intensity. That is its power per area. And that's how we relate various light sources. How much total power it delivers to our eyes or such not only depends upon the brightness, so-called, of the light, it depends upon the area of your eyeball. Now, with that being said, Sometimes light comes out from a point source. Point source. When a wave light, for instance, It originates from a point source. The intensity falls off as 1 over r squared. Let me try to explain why this is true. So i is proportional to 1 over r squared. Now, why is that? Well, in this source, coming out in all directions, is the wave. a spherical wave. Now, the total amount of energy that was delivered, say from the sun for instance, is fixed. It doesn't change no matter how far away you get. The sun is delivering a certain amount of energy from here and that's all there is. But at any point, say right here, the area has increased by the surface area of a sphere. So I is equal to a constant, a constant power, let's say. Divided by 4 pi r squared. That's the surface area of a sphere. So the p, the 4 pi, they were all constant. The amount of energy per time, 4 pi, that starts out from this, will continue out going further and further out in space. But as it goes further and further out in space, 
it'll be going through bigger and bigger spheres. And as it does, it'll fall off of 1 over r squared because that's what happens to the area sphere. So the further away you are from an object, the dimmer it appears, provided it spreads out like this. Now, does everything spread out like that? No, it doesn't have to. For instance, there are things called lasers. So let me uh, create a new page here. So with this new page, what if you shot a laser? Well, in the case of a laser, the light appears to go out kind of like this. It doesn't spread out. So, because it doesn't spread out much, the intensity is approximately constant. This is true for what are called plane waves. Remember, these little arrows represent our rays from when we talked about waves earlier. Since the area doesn't change, the calm which the plane moves, then the intensity doesn't change. The energy coming out is always a constant. The question has to do with the geometry. How is the light spreading out? How is the water wave spreading out? If the wave doesn't spread out, then the intensity stays fixed. If it does spread out from a point source, then you should be able to show that it goes as 1 over r squared. Again, the reason for using intensity is because we usually only catch a small part of the total wave. So if we know the power per area, and we know the area of the object we're using to catch the wave, we can multiply the area of this object times the intensity to find the power that's delivered. Multiply by the time to find the total energy delivered. All right, that finishes this video.